This is a complex and costly practice for a municipality to monitor. There is our standards regarding the soil standards, and the notion or the requirement for regular project meetings between parties, township access to the site, and data relating to source sites, their address and the owner, the total fill received, the list of the complaints, and the results of the soil and groundwater tests. And lastly, there is no clear definition of clean fill or dirty dirt. We need a new table designed specifically for this industry rather than using the proxy tables that are the current practice. With regards to the MOE's best uh, their draft guidelines, LCCW, along with other stakeholders, notes a significant omission from the BMP and that is the absence of specific standards that would indicate acceptable soil quality for excess soils. Ministry tables, such as the one shown here, were developed for use in brownfield regulation. However, these tables are being used by industry and planning authorities outside of their prescribed use. The ministry has provided no other relevant standards. The last category of gaps that you could, could characterize them as administrative type of issues the first is, again, the whole issue of dealing with the acceptable level of soil quality for the receiving site and being able to do your due diligence to make sure that, again, it's not going to result in any adverse impacts. And again, a, a lot of the, the recommendations that came out of the ministry's best management practices as well as uh, some of the recommendations in CLOPA's large fill policy talked to about minimum standards for sampling both at the source site and the receiving site. Um, but we also require a qualified person to tell us what beyond the minimum standards should be applied. We also have in our new CLOCA policy a number of conditions relating to, again, the chain of custody from, again, the source site to the receiving site, as well as the chain of custody from when the sample is taken to when it's taken to a lab as well. In Pickering, for example, a report by the city's consultant revealed that Phil was coming in from development in downtown Toronto. Fill quality reports were reviewed by city staff and all was determined to be in line. However, independent testing by the city's consultant revealed adverse test results for every random sample taken on the fill site. In the city of Kawartha Lakes, a property owner brought in fill materials in order to further rehabilitate an expired gravel pit to pasture lands. The Ministry of the Environment staff indicated that soils were deposited on these lands from a soil remediation facility. Independent testing by the MOE last June revealed exceedances of contaminant concentrations in all samples taken. So how does this happen? These are a few comments documented by MOE provincial officers in orders issued for some fill sites in the Durham region. As one comment reads, the amount of sampling was not sufficient and how the sample information relates to the material that was in fact deposited at the site is not clear. The ministry does not regulate or require a record of the quality of any soil removed or where any soil excavated goes, nor does OREG 153 require that it be tested. It is usually up to the qualified person of the particular project to address if the material is a waste or if the material can be reused on another site. For LCCW, what is most concerning about the regulation is the critical omission regarding the lack of testing I challenge any of you to follow up to your residential developments, uh, subdivision developments, soil landfill sites, or any other development site and tell me to any degree of accuracy where that imported soil originated from and to find the soil testing results of those deposits. You will be surprised at the limited information you will find. This results in confusion, public alarm, and fear, inconsistent practices, and possible threat to our environment and drinking water. Those realities now rule the day. What is clean fill? How do I know what quality of fill is acceptable to be received at any given receiving site? Why should we allow fill to proceed from outside of our township or municipality? Who is responsible for ensuring the quality of fill? How do we know where the material came from? What is, the, what is an adverse effect defined by the Ministry of Environment? Why shouldn't all this material go to a landfill? And what are the potential risks if fill sites are not permitted? Again, it goes back to one of the comments made by uh, one of the consultants here that, you know, again, you get a, you know, a varying approach in towards the way consultants take their issues and how they come up with an actual on a site. And, you know, these sites move anywhere generally between 50 and 100,000 cubic meters from any one site downtown. And, 
some engineers determine that one borehole or one sample is enough. You get pretty big pushback from any of them on asking for more. And I've heard some of the solutions about, you know, the frequency of testings, et cetera. I mean, I think now we're at the point where we all have to take the approach that anything leaving a site, especially in the GTA, could potentially be contaminated. Um, and we have to find a way to deal with it on all ends. And the, the going back to the frequency of testing, and I heard it earlier, was that, well, if we test once for every 160 cubic meters, it's potentially a solve for the problem. Well, that may be a solution for the problem, but practically operating a site, you know, we all know in the business how long it takes to get a sample back, and generally we get that stuff back in seven to 10 days. And after seven to 10 days, the material's generally moved. No, the inconsistency of testing. If I put a clear glass and I put a little bit of Kool-Aid in it, it's all gonna go yellow or blue. If I have the same volume and I put the same volume of Kool-Aid in soil, the rest of the soil is not gonna turn blue, only what it touches and what it's absorbed to. So when you do soil sampling for metals or hydrocarbons, it's very inconsistent. You gotta look at it. Mercury is known as a, as a neurotoxin, but if you have mercury in soil, it'll never fail a leachate test. It'll always pass. What's the problem with the testing? You take benzene in, at all your gas stations. I, we do probably 40, 50 gas stations a year that the consultants bring to us. It never fails a T-clip. Why? There's problems in the testing program. Even though it's the best that we got and what the, the world has, there's problems with it. It has to be dealt with. To continue on the topic of testing, our industry strongly questions the use of the tables and the brownfield regs to determine fill quality. Um, I, I would strongly recommend to municipalities that we, we develop some other system or some other management, some other process in, in order to gauge whether materials are inert or not. Um, the permeability of the soils and the destination isn't even addressed in the tables. So if you have a site that has permeable soils, you probably want soils that you bring in that are going to match that. Uh, the, the tables don't test, don't touch that at all.